Ebenezer. Last week we look at the grammar dimension of faith. We can it's a very powerful message. I personally look forward to listening to it again. We had some technical hitches and we're not able to, to cut it and upload it. But I believe before midnight tonight, we shall be able be able to upload it so that it can be a blessing to many all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. So today we are looking at the four phases of faith. The four phases of faith. What is faith? Faith is Divine instruction plus action. Faith is divine instruction plus action. Before you put your action to faith, faith remains an emotion. But when you put action to faith, faith begins to manifest. The Bible talks about taking a step of faith. James says that so faith without works is dead. So it is important that we always add action to our faith. Faith is anchored in the instructions of God. Faith is anchored in the instructions of God. Before faith, before God speaks to you individually, it is very difficult for your faith to be powerful. So what is faith? Faith is enforcing the will and the ways of God. Faith is enforcing the will and the ways of God. We, we took some time to explain what the will of God is. And we also took some time to elaborate on what the ways of God are. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, for I have got a plan for you. In other words, I have got faults for you. Faults to bless you. Faults to give you an expected end. Now that we understand and know what faith, where faith comes from, we know that faith comes from hearing the rhema of God. The rhema word of God is not the logos. Let's go and look at the four phases of faith. Faith begins, number one, by hearing. When the word of God is weakened in your heart, you go to the next phase, which is meditation. And after you have meditated upon the word that you have, then you have to speak. So it begins from hearing, then it goes to meditation, and then when you have meditated with the force of the power of the word inside your spirit, you speak it out, and then after you have spoken it out, you have to go to take some practical so it begins from hearing. It goes to meditation. It goes to speaking out. And it goes to taking action. Those are the four phases of faith. 
limited in any yoke. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah Surayas and verse 21. Oh, you know what we mean? Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 7, you know the Bible says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you. Saying, This is the way to walk. Walk in it. Where so ever you turn to the right and to the left or whenever you turn to the left your ears shall hear a word saying this is the way walk in it the bible says in the book of john my sheep they hear my voice and i know them God is so intentional to build a relationship with us. He is so intentional in ensuring that we hear his voice. He desires to relate with us. So as individuals, God himself takes the responsibility to make familiar a practical channel to make familiar a channel through which he speaks to you. All of us we shall agree that there is a dominant channel through which God speaks to us. You will find some people God speaks to them through the convictions of their heart. They feel an impression of that heart. So strong and so loud to some people. And I believe all of us, God will always speak to us through the word of God. And the safest platform through which the Lord speaks to us in the word of God. Let the word of the Lord dwell richly in your heart. The more the word of God you have in you, the more you are safe. There are teachings right now you find everywhere. Some people say that the Old Testament is not necessary. But for me, I believe in the whole gospel. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament. If you have read the New Testament, you will notice that every scripture that Jesus quoted came from the Old Testament. Every scripture that Paul and Peter quoted came from the Old Testament. So, where did this, this doctrine of saying the Old Testament is not relevant? The Old Testament is so powerful. Every scripture is inspired by God. And so the whole Bible is relevant. God can speak to you from Genesis, from Exodus, from Numbers, from Leviticus, from Deuteronomy, from even the book of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Daniel. He can speak to you from any of those scriptures. So you need the entire Bible. You need the Word of God in its completeness. So God desires to speak to us. He desires to train us to hear Him in the most dominant grace He has given you. Some people dream and the Lord speaks to them. There are people who get open vision. Anywhere they are, they begin to get open vision. Hallelujah. My desire and my prayer for all of us is that we should be able to hear God in our own way. The days of waiting for pastor to give you direction are over. The Bible says in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and the young man they shall 
seen vision. They shall prophesy. And the old men shall dream dreams. The Bible continues to say in the book of Job that in the night season, wild men sleep. The Lord seals instructions in there. The Bible continues to say in the book of Job that there is a spirit in man and the breath of God gives it understanding. So I pray for you that all of us individually shall grow and develop and understand the voice of God. Be trained in the way that God speaks to you so that you will not guess whether it is the voice of the Lord. You know exactly how God speaks to you. Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 he says, things I heard about your faith, I do not cease to pray for you, but I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding will be open, will be enlightened, that you may be able to understand the entrance of the word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 130 says the entrance of the word of God it brings light and gives understanding to the same. So it is important that we must hear the voice of God. Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 verse 17 this is what the Bible says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord we are talking about the hearing part of faith faith comes by here and hearing by the word of God. It is important that you hear the word of God continuously because out of the abundance of the word that you hear, an answer will be quickened for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of faith is always weakened out of the abundance of the heart. The word of faith is always weakened out of the abundance of the heart. Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, It is not what enters into your mouth that defiles you, but it is what comes out of that defines change. So the question is, what do you fill your heart with? It's important that you fill your heart with the word of God. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that comes out of the word of the mouth of God. How many people believe that on a daily there is a word for you from the Lord? On a daily there is a word for you from the Lord. Just like in any regular house, in the morning, for every child, there is breakfast, there is lunch, there is supper. So in the equation of the Holy Spirit, there is a word for you in the morning, there is a word for you at noon time, there is a word for you in the evening. But you have to take the action of faith and open the scriptures, open the Bible, open the word of God and look out for the word of God for you or not be careful what you hear be careful what you allow to enter into your heart because what you enter into the, your heart will determine the quality of your life I will say that again what enters into your heart will determine the quality of your heart. It is what comes out of you that either defines you or edifies 
life you. What comes up in your heart depends on what you see and what you enjoy. Hallelujah. Let's go a little bit deeper. Awareness. Know what the knowing that is in your heart. Awareness. The knowing that is in your heart. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. What is the knowing that is in your heart concerning the future of your children? Concerning your business? Concerning the ministry? Concerning the life of your children? What is the knowing in your heart? We need to know exactly what the heart and the mind of God is. Concerning every aspect of our lives. As a matter of fact, you need to know what is in the heart of God. Concerning your life, as far as this altar is concerned, you may find that God does not desire you to be here. God might be desiring that you go to another place. But as God is telling you, you have been in this mountain long enough. There is another place for you to go. It is important concerning every aspect of your life. The relationship, the church you go to, our God is a God of transformation and is a progressive God. In every season, there are messages that are good for you. Some of us who listen to messages on YouTube, YouTube, we may have been following certain preachers. For example, okay, you may have followed Joyce Meyer for a while. But now when you listen to any message from Joyce you don't feel a connection. You may have listened to TG Jakes for a while. Then after a season, you don't feel. Then there is a preacher that you may have been neglecting. Every time you see him on YouTube, you say, I was scrolling on it. Then it's one time you listen to him and you find God uses him to speak to you. So in every so there are sets of messages that God will expect us to listen. Why? It's not because we don't have pastors. But he desires that in that season, some kind of food nourishes your body. Doctors say that there are seasons when you need to take in more vitamins or supplements. They tell you add vitamins. It will help you. Add some iron and calcium. It will help with your body. The Holy Spirit has a way that He even leads you on what you need to eat from a spiritual perspective. So we need to know you a sense of flexibility because the Holy Spirit is flexible. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not reading. Today you may love a particular soul so tomorrow when you hear it you just feel so and then you find that a new soul comes out you can listen to it the whole day that blesses you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not a God of monopoly. He is not monotonous. He is not monotonous. The Bible says His mercies are new every morning. So there is a new word for everyone on a day. So we begin from here. When we hear the word of God, and the word of God has been weakened to us. For example, okay, sir. the Lord has given us a word this year. Mm -hmm. But this year is the year of takeoff. So the next phase, you have to ponder on you have to matter that word. Pondering and muttering is called meditation. You must incubate that word in your heart. Say it over and over again. 
everything in your mind it will find its way in your heart Let's, let me make some bit of a clarity here when you hear the word of God you grab it in your mind when you read the word of God you grab it in your mind but when you meditate on that word it goes to your heart and it has to go to your heart because faith is not a matter of the mind but it is a matter of the heart I will say that again faith is not a matter of the mind it is not what you think but it is what is weakened in your heart it is what is weakened in your spirit so when you get the word of God it is important for you to meditate upon it you ponder upon it you matter it that's why the Bible says Joshua chapter 1 and verses 8 Joshua 1 verses 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written there for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have a good success you shall meditate upon it you must ponder it you must mutter it you must speak it under your breath I am the head and not the tail I am the head and not the tail I am the head and not the tail until your spirit registers it until it is programmed in your spirit so that when you come to the place of prayer it is weakened naturally you do not look for scriptures to stand but the scripture is already written on the tablet of your heart so meditation is that I will give you an example. Our local chicken in the villages. Forget about these ones. The broilers and the broilers. But there is that local chicken has been programmed with a system. But in a season of laying eggs, it gathers all its eggs together. Then for 21 days, it sits on those days that you will have it avoids all kinds of destruction it even avoids the temptation to go out to eat yes once in a while it will run out eat some food drink some water but it comes back it rolls on those eggs it creates warmth on those eggs it moves those eggs with its peaks then after 21 days you see beautiful chicks and those beautiful chicks are the future of that hand there is a programming in the chicken that causes it to understand and appreciate meditation brothers and sisters and so is the word of God when you hear the word of God that line that works for you that scripture that works for you meditate upon it meditate upon it the Bible says you do it day and night in that before you sleep make it the last scripture you listen to so that you sleep on it it enters your spirit it is that scripture that will make your way prosper and give you a good success that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God by hearing the word of God by hearing the word of God hallelujah number three 
speaking out your declaration people that are mature in faith are very tactical in their words people that are very mature in faith are very tactical in the way they speak you ask them how are you say I will be well by the grace of God because by the by, by strike of Jesus I am here how are you feeling I don't feel so well but I believe that I'm well because I stand they do not allow themselves to be overwhelmed by the situation. Brother, you seem to be broke. What's happening? They say it is well. I know the finances are coming. The money is coming. This situation is just temporary. I'm just passing through. But I'm coming out of this. They don't say, Hamunan. The economy is not doing well. The dollar is inflation is all over the place. Everyone is complaining. I don't know what is happening. You see potholes on the road. They continue speaking. They have already disorganized their declaration of the place on which they are standing by the people that are mature in faith are very tactical in the word that they speak as a matter of fact they avoid the people that speak negative they avoid the people they don't want speak negative. This is what they said about the Domosa. When you enter into his office, you see the scripture that is written. The just shall live by faith. And then under that scripture, it is written, when you're here, you must speak faith. In other words, he programs everything around you. He does not want to hear anything negative. Brothers and sisters, you need to be very intentional and tactical in the way you speak. Hallelujah. Words like I'm coming out it should be part of your speaking. It is well, it is just a temporary situation. My help is coming. Those should be the, your declaration. Hallelujah. My God has supplied my own needs according to his riches in God. Those are the scriptures that should come out of your mouth. Not that we are in a warfare. That's why we must use our conversation tactically. Make sure that your prayer and your words and your action they are lying together. Make sure that when after praying for hours, the first person you meet does not be programmed. The declaration that you made in prayer. And it is very possible. There are some people you meet and they are so negative. I don't know why they dwell on negativity. But may God help them. You may find you've been praying in an overnight. You get a phone call, no phone is seen, and there began, becomes a big difference between that your your prayer the whole night and what you speak on phone. Make sure what you pray aligns with what you speak and your action. Praise the Lord. Even though I stop here, I think I have made a point. Make sure your prayers align with what you say and align with your action. That is very, very important.
The just shall live by faith. Whatsoever you have concerning you, whatsoever you pray concerning you, let it align with what you say concerning you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say that I am by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because his rod and his staff they will comfort me. Hallelujah. The Lord is the portion of my head and of my cup. The lines to fall for me in yeah, pleasant yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right, but it shall not come by me. The sun shall not smite me by day, and the moon shall not smite me by night. Therefore, it is well with me. It is well with my children. Because my children shall be told of the Lord. And great shall be their peace. You align your prayers with your speech and your meditation and your action. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are in a warfare. You are actually fighting. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible says, verse 17, take the elements of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Listen to this. I just want to tie it together with a scripture in the book of Genesis. Genesis 27. Verses 14. By your sword you shall live. Listen to that. By your sword you shall live. The sword which is the word of God, which is upon your mouth. By it you will live. By it you will do all fair. By your sword you shall live. And you shall serve your brother. And you shall come to pass. When you become restless. Is there anyone that is restless? When you become restless. About the situation. About the condition. Standing upon the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God upon your mind. You begin to break his yoke from your neck. You break his yoke from your neck. Someone here, do you have any yoke that you have to break? It begins with the sword of the spirit. Let me tell you something. This word, you must be pregnant with it in your heart. The word of God is just the seed. And you have to plant it in your heart. How do you plant it in your heart? Through meditation. Just like any seed that is planted on the ground, it enters down on the ground as though it has no life. But the environment in the soil, the warmth that is in the soil, the moisture that is in the soil, begins to work on that seed. And that seed begins to break its shell. And the first thing it does, it pushes its roots and said it brings to bring a shoot in the same manner when the word of God is on the right condition in the state of your heart it begins to shoot down the Bible says and the rain and they shall take root down and they shall bear fruit brothers and sisters you meditate on that word and that word begins to break a shoot out of your heart and when it comes out of your heart it comes as faith it comes with power and it's a faith it becomes quick and active it becomes sharper than a twist that is the power of meditation when you meditate 
It finds an environment that is conducive that won't and it begins to grow it and it comes out with power. So your word is your seed. The one that has been given to you is Allow you to meditate upon it. Allow yourself to meditate upon it. Until it is able to break out of your heart. And it can bring it shall bear fruit. It shall bear fruit for you. It shall bear fruit for you. Bear fruit for you. The Bible says, and on this word, you shall meditate day and night. He shall be an intent day and night. He is like a tree that is planted by the water. Who leaves who leaves that we don't find out and he shall bring out for fruit even in the season. We see, we say that. The quality of your life depends on the quality of your confession. Just like you practice to speak in tongues. Until the tongues that you speak become a language. So you need to train yourself to confess the word of God. Until the confession of the word becomes second nature. If you are praying one hour. Praying in tongues for 45 minutes. Then for the next 15 minutes. Begin to declare over your day. I am blessed in my going down. I am blessed in my coming in. This is the day that the Lord has made. My enemy shall come against me. In one direction. But they shall scatter in seven. Everything I do shall prosper. Everything I do shall prosper. For the Lord delights in my prosperity. For the Lord delights in my prosperity. You declare the word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This year I will see the light. This year I take off. Everything that I do, I take off in my relationship. I take off in my business. I take off in the works of my hands. I take off in ministry.
Father, help me. But the word that I speak and the meditations of my heart shall be pleasing to you, O God. Let the word that I speak, let the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God. Have mercy upon me for thinking negative, for speaking negative, for declaring negative, for declaring concerning my life based on what I see around my life. Heavenly Father, change the words of my mouth that they may align according to your word. Someone is praying. Someone I pray. Someone is praying. Praying that the Lord will help. Concerning the word that you speak. Concerning the word that you speak. Pray that the Lord will help. Don't dwell on the feeling. Don't dwell on the feeling. I'm 